Hello, my convicts and convicts, this is Isaac Convict bringing you guys and gals yes, a new video. So today in the video, we're going to talk a little bit about the Nacon. Yes, we're back on the Nacon, we're using the Nacon again. Excuse the wire, this is not the same wire. This is the actual wire I actually got from Timu. I actually did a uh, unboxing a very long time ago from some products from Timu, and this was one, which is a Type-C to Type-C. So I had to even get a USB converter for the other side that's plugged into the PC. And it actually fits in, and this fits in really snug as well. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the controller and this app. But if you do ever have any problems, if you get this off Timu, very, very cheap and easy, just make sure to get one that's Type-C to USB uh, and not like I did Type-C to Type-C, unless you've got the functionality for that on a PC. Anyway, so... Today's video, I want to kind of look into this because I was playing Modern Warfare 3. If you know now, I've got one gigabit fiber and I've started using the Nacon again. So playing a few games from uh, yesterday, I had a few issues where I felt like the sensitivity and even now when I've been playing it a little bit this morning, it felt really, really sensitive that I was struggling to sort of track and aim at people. You know, the, the first initial push of a controller or you slide around the corner and then you try to go and aim at someone. I've been struggling with it a little bit because of the way that it uh, this controller is. If you don't know, the Nacons are notorious for being uh, more sensitive or more responsive, I should say, than the PS5 controller. And I know this because I've had many people in the past saying, can you make this feel like a PlayStation 5 controller? Can you help me out with that? And I've tried, obviously, different options, but without knowing exactly what Play uh, PlayStation do with their controllers... I don't know. It's it's kind of one of those things that's really hard to replicate, and especially on the unlimited version, which has a very different graph to the first one. It is kind of difficult to you know replicate those things. Anyway, so what I've done here, I've actually figured out something that actually might work. It's been helping me. I do need to keep on adjusting it a little bit, so I recommend not to follow this word for word, but just kind of uh, experiment with this particular feature I'm going to show you right now and then see how you get on so you feel comfortable and confident with it. So we're in the PlayStation app as you can see here. For some weird reason this game only allows me to play if I've got it on PlayStation which is Modern Warfare 3 that you can see just at the background around the edges here. That's uh, Modern Warfare 3. Um, but yeah well let me put it in PC mode I don't know why and it's not this app I know this app needs PlayStation mode because it shows you and demonstrates it, but the game as well needs to be played in PlayStation mode. Put it in PC mode, doesn't like it. So I'll show you that in a moment. Right, so while we're here, all you need to do is the option I'm gonna talk about in question is the dead zone, this at the bottom here. So if you're having an issue where you feel like the controller is too sensitive, then what I would recommend you doing is turning up the dead zone. As you can see, I put a dead zone of 10 on uh, in order to try and combat. I actually find 10 is okay. I might adjust it a little bit more and see how we go. So I'm going to actually put it up to about 15 on here. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, that's crazy because you're adding a dead zone. It's really weird. I don't know how Nacon does their dead zones on their controller but it doesn't seem to respond exactly the same way as what it does for an actual dead zone in game. So I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it will stop that really, really fine, sensitive first touch that you're pressing when you do the first initial touch of the controller to aim at someone. It'll actually help rectify that problem, and then you can make the dead zone zero in game, and it feels good, and then just add on so much. So I'm going to experiment a little bit and I will do a repeat video for this to show you where which dead zones I think work the best for terms of slowing that down and so on and so forth because I'm going to go all the way from zero all the way up to 100 and see where the problems are where it kind of goes and then go back in tens. So I'll try 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20 and then so on and so forth. And then if I hit a good region, then obviously I'll go down in ones until I get to that point where I feel it's good enough to make a video on. So stick around for that. If you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Make sure to change the notifications to all because it will automatically, if you press it once, give you just featured. So make sure you set it to all. So 
we've done that. You can follow here if you want. There's a couple of examples I wanted to show you in regards to these. So these basically around about here generally uh, when you first come into the app, the, roughly somewhere around here. Now I've been experimenting a little bit with them and I've kind of got two methods that I kind of like. They are methods I've used before, but I kind of feel like they work out. So number one method is just to put that one in the top corner and then put this on the top corner just on top of it. So they're both in the same place. Don't forget to save and then click on this to activate profile. And then you'll get this pop out. That means that it's now saved. And that's all I really change on here. And the main focus that I wanted to focus you on, if you're wanting to kind of slow down the sensitivity of your aim, is to look at the dead zone. The other one you can do as well that I've been doing that you saw at the beginning is actually had that one in the bottom, that at the top. Again, save and then activate profile. Uh, they're just two examples I wanted to show off in this video as well. But the main thing I'm talking about today is the dead zones. This is what I'm uh, assuming will help in terms of dead zone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go crazy and put it up to 99, uh, save it, activate profile, and then put OK. So let's go into the game and let's see if this actually makes any difference to this. Just to show like left stick, I've done the same where one's at the bottom, one's at the top, minus uh, no dead zones. I've just left that as is. Uh, that one is the same, you just put any buttons you want, L2 and R2 looks like this, and uh, there you go, that's the end of that one. So I'll go back to that one, let's move this out of the way, go into the game, move the controller. So if I show you, if I put this into PC mode, it doesn't like it, look, it, it stopped, it stopped working. I don't know why it does that, but you have to put this into, and you can see, because it's got a different colour here as well, this is the PC mode you can select your own colors put it back into playstation mode and there you go it redetects what it is so it's really weird i don't know why the nacons do that let me click on screen so it'll go in there we go so i've now got functionality back right so i've put it on a really really stupid sensitivity so yeah i can definitely feel that i can definitely feel that look if i move it it's not doing anything not doing anything at all look I'm not moving and I'm wiggling it. So that's the sensitivity of 99 is too much. It's far too much. So it does actually do something with sensitivity. So what we're going to do then, let's go back to the NACOM and let's go back to where I initially put it, which is around about 15 dead zone. Save and activate profile. Let's move that out of the way. Sign back in, there we go. So now when I move, as you can see, I do move. But what I'm trying to do here, what, what the idea of doing this is, is remove that first initial movement that can cause you the issue of, obviously when you're going to aim like this sort of thing, when you're trying to aim to people to try and help, obviously make sure that you're always on target sort of thing. Because if you turn it off, it's really sensitive. I can show you that as well. But... It helps, and it also helps with recoil as well and keeping on target as well, which is really, really good. So I definitely recommend doing it. Just try not to turn it down too much. And if anything, just mess around with your sensitivities and turn them up and down and just see where it works for you. At the moment, I'm kind of rocking a 0.65. Let's go back up to 7.5 because I feel like 7.5, I was better. Maybe uh, a bit further down, some zero. Yeah, some zero is good. But yeah, this removes that little bit of very sensitiveness out of the controller. And then obviously, if you want to add anything in there, once you get it to the sweet spot and you find it's good, but you've, if you still feel you've got any problems, then you can also go down to the controller Go to the dead zone inputs here, and you can actually mess around the dead zones. Let's stick, I made it so it's got a quicker max speed. This basically is how much you need to push to achieve maximum speed. Left stick, obviously you want to be able to sprint or move as fast as possible. 74 is pretty decent. You don't want to go too low. I did try around 45, uh, and 45 is too much where if you stop, 
you will jitter forward a little bit and you probably end up dropping off. It becomes really, really sensitive that you'll, you'll accidentally, just the slightest touch will make you move and then you'll fall off places. So uh, yeah, you want to be uh, careful. Zero for the min stick, zero for the right stick, obviously for the dead zones. If you want to add like an extra dead zone on, then uh, then by all means do so. You know, see see if that helps in terms of anything else. Like I could put maybe 10 for the right stick. There you go. And it'll help you keep on target look. So basically, we go back now to the NACOM. So basically the idea of this today is for the dead zone to remove that slight little bit of sensitiveness at the beginning. And then once you've released, you've got rid of that. Excuse my phone because I've got the phone on at the moment. I was waiting for a call. Um, so yeah, if you are having any issues and you want to remove that slight sensitiveness, that first press sensitivity, and you're saying when I first move it, it's like Wah! sort of thing rather than nice. Put up the dead zones. You want to kind of start maybe 10 and then go up to about 15. I think 15 is pretty good. Let's actually try 20. Let's try a couple before we end the video because this video is going to be quite short anyway. So let me do that. Activate that. And uh, that again still feels all right. To slow my aim down just a little bit, so I'd have to probably reduce my dead zones on here. Let me just do it without for now. Yeah, it's it might be a bit too much for me. Obviously, everyone's different, so all all more for for it. It still feels good. But it feels like I'm slightly off with it. I think mine mine is round about 15 is my uh, my decent area. You want to do this and then move around, keep yourself moving, and then see see if you can keep on tar target while you're moving around like this. If you can keep on target, then obviously you're good. I'm I'm struggling a little bit with it on there. So I think for me personally. I do think 15 or a little bit lower than 15 should be pretty decent for me. Yeah, 15 is pretty decent for me. It doesn't need to be too much. And then if I ever want to add like an extra dead zone in, I can do. Which I think actually would probably be decent if I actually had around about 10 on the uh, right stick yeah there you go so if you want to try it you can so don't forget if you want to follow along with me on this video uh dead zones left stick you don't have to do that uh but right stick if you put right stick onto 10 and then when you're going to the Nacon app like I said go around 10 or 15. I feel for me it's 15. Don't forget also to include the minus. And then I've got, like I said, these at the bottom, this at the top. Try them both at the top if you want like this or try them like this. These are the two places I can only suggest because you do anything else, it kind of messes up the curves or it messes up the way that the controller functions. It kind of acts, behaves oddly, which is why I've always liked the bar graph rather than this chart. But it is what it is. There's not much change. And even the new PlayStation uh, 5 version that they brought out uh, very recently, that also has this graph. So there's not much getting away from it either. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like this is the best spot to put them and keep them in there. So if you want to follow along, have one anchored to the bottom, the other one anchored to the top, 15 dead zone, try 10, 15, minus and then save. Uh, for the left stick, obviously you don't need to do the same. I've just done this for the sake of doing it. You don't necessarily need to do it. You could probably even move both of them down there and make it more sensitive if you're playing like first person shooters. If you're not and you're playing more car, then obviously you probably want to have these both up in this corner and maybe add a bit of dead zone to make it less sensitive for turning corners and stuff if you're riding vehicles. 
and it has to use left thumbstick. So yeah, there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick video, this quick tech tip to help you out with Nacon. I'm going to be doing more Nacon. Hopefully in the future, I'll get to try out the new Nacon if I ever get the chance. So uh, Nacon, please, please like this video. Please share it with Nacon. Tweet it at Nacon. Let them know and say, yo, give this guy a chance to review one of your units and uh, maybe they will do so. Maybe this video will get enough views that they will see it and go, oh, okay, well, this guy's got plenty of views. Let us give him, uh, give him a controller to review. So uh, there we go. Anyway, if you enjoy, please like the video. Please subscribe if you are new. Hit the notification bell. Again, hit it back to back. Make sure it's not set to featured because it will automatically go to featured. Make sure you set it to all by hitting it once. It'll go featured. Tap it again. It'll bring you a drop down. Go to the top where it says all and then just drop it onto all. And there you go. If you want to take it that one step further, you can join the channel. It's just $1.99. Gives you access to emotes and, emotes and badges. We are live streaming on, on Monday or coming back on Monday. So if you want to be part of that. So emotes and badges we're going to be doing giveaways for elites as well which is what you'll become if you join here an elite convict or elite convict hat i do want to give giveaways but we we've only got one person as an elite so far and if you want to help as well with charity work i do want to do some charity work and christmas work and stuff and do certain things that help charities whether it's like christmas for children that don't get christmas presents over christmas there's usually a radio station that helps with that if we can get enough people behind or enough backing maybe i could go and we could get our favorite radio station to sponsor me i don't know i'll help out and then obviously i want to do some charity work for dementia and autism two things that obviously are part of my life as i have got uh people with my uh, within within my heart my friendship my family that do have uh, dementia and autism. So, completely up to you. One thing I do want you to do before we end off, please like this video. The more likes, the more attention, the more people will see, the more people will come over and go, oi, who is this guy? So uh, please help out with that. And uh, thank you very much. Anyway, I salute you all and I will see you in a video. Hopefully you enjoyed and yeah, bye for now.